all know what what gender really is. It was just a social construct. And I think people like me and people who are living their life as other than the binary really challenge the minds of a lot of people out there. And, and it really makes them question their own reality and their own identity. And I think that's where a lot of the issues come out and a lot of the transphobia really is projecting. It's just themselves projecting into us that how can you really be so in touch with yourself? And I cannot. Hi, well, my name is Luna Cisneros, also known as Luna Carr, my performer name. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, ella. I am based off of Bronzeville, Texas. That is the lower valley, the tip of te Texas, down in South Padre. How long have you been performing in queer spaces? I've been performing in queer spaces for about five years. So yeah, so I've been in queer spaces for five years. I've done um, a lot of things from drag activism to coming out in doc, doc series, right? Like with Vice, um, I've done a lot of Telemundo, Univision, local channels, really speaking on performance and queer performance and what that means and expression of the arts of drag. What parts of your identity shape your view of the world? It shapes it in, I, I am dealing with a lot of Catholicism down here, a lot of machismo, a lot of division between communities, right? From my Latino community to my queer community. Uh, there's uh, a lot of things that intersects when it comes to positive, negative. Um, and one of them is when you live as a trans woman, sometimes you need to pass, right? And that those are very um big worries of me that gives me a lot of anxiety when going out in the public or into like cis places right so that's one thing and then obviously the other thing in my own community sometimes we face a lot of discrimination and and we our voice gets a little shut down on on certain topics right so as a trans woman it has shaped me into becoming uh, more strong and really really uh sitting down in the table and having these conversations and calling out machismo, calling out people who don't view us as women, right? Mm -hmm. Who don't think we have part in the conversation. And I mean it in all aspects, in, in, in all conversations. So yeah, it definitely has shaped me into somebody who is now more brave, um, who is more outspoken and who will make sure that my voice is heard and the voices of my sisters and brothers and siblings are heard anywhere they need to be heard and they're not respected. What does drag mean to you? And what does this community mean to you? Drag literally means so much to me. Um, it, it was something that um, opened my eyes to my own identity and accepting my own femininity. Um, it really allowed me to just fully experience myself and touch bases to the reality of who I am as a person and how I felt. Have I always felt an oppressed because of everyone always telling me, no, mm -hmm. you were born a male, you have to act like a male. Um, there's no such thing. Drag really allowed me and gave me that liberty to just say, can we curse? Yeah, of course. Okay, drag gave me the liberty to say, fuck you to misogynist comments, fuck you to having this gender role, fuck you to not living your authentic self. So drag really empowered me and gave me my voice and gave me those eyes to really see myself and, and believe in myself and to just trust my, my own instinct as a human living on, on this material world. How do you feel that the, these drag bans and attacks on trans youth, how would they impact you, your spaces and your communities? Personally, I can say it drives me into really, really pushing against it. It gives me the fire to continue fighting and living my authentic self every single day. Where I come from is from a place of bravery and I come from a, a space where I was always taught to shut up and not question what those people in power really did to our communities. And um, no importa si me lleva hasta la muerte donde me lleve, mm -hmm. um, I will live my life authentically till the last breath I take on this earth. Um, so that's what it does to me. But what it really does to my community, it kind of censors us. It's trying to erase our existence. It's trying to erase our voices and that we were ever on this planet. But the reality of it is we've been here 
since day one. There's a lot of cultures who see us as a third gender. There's a lot of cultures that there's there's people like me and, and they've been there for centuries, but I think ever since we all were colonized worldwide by those people, we were try, they were trying to erase us and they continue to try to erase us, but lo bueno nunca muere. Eso es lo, eso es lo, lo que digo yo. Um, we're going to be here regardless. We're going to reincarnate and continue to to live our lives in this earth until we come here and we we uh, distribute this message of love because that's that's really what what life should be, right? It should be about loving each other and respecting. That kind of wraps up like the the more like serious questions. I have some fun kind of just rapid fire questions. These are like a little bit sillier and just you know top of your head, whatever you're thinking. Cats or dogs? Oh fuck, cats. Gay son or thought daughter? Thought daughter, duh. Duh, I want that bitch to be thotting the house down boots. Like, and even a gay son, come give them to me. Give me twins, bitch. Yes, both. Twins. Of one of twins. Give me a gay ass son I and a daughter. Human hair or synthetic wig? Oh, baby, human. What you mean? Human all the way. Okay, what about this one? Heels or platforms? Oh, heel. <laughs> Heels. Heels. Your legs just look so beautiful. You look so elegant and so poised and uh, it just lifts you up and it makes you feel the fantasy. Can you share a performance ritual with us? Like something that you do before you perform? A ritual that I really have is adding a bunch of glitter on any skin that is showing. Oh. So I think it, it alleviates, it's kind of like me telling you're going to be okay. Like, you know, when somebody oh. does this to you mm -hmm. with my body, when I'm adding the glitter. And it's this beautiful glitter, this Fenty glitter bomb to Yama. And it, it shines like a mother. So you just look like glass on stage. So I do that every single time I'm about to go on stage, put it all over my hands and it calms my anxiety and it makes me just look so glowy and beautiful. Would you rather never say slay again or slay so hard every day that it, the word loses all its meaning? Oh, fuck. That's a hard one. Oh, I suck at these. That's a really hard one. Okay. Um, I would rather take away the word because I would rather feel it and, and feel the fantasy, right? Than to lose its meaning. Oh my God. That's, I, this is, I posted this as soon as I started feeling comfortable in my own skin because I was very the girl to not show skin yeah um, I wanted something that it was comfortable enough to show things but also hide certain things and the fact that I don't have a BBL just yet uh, but I have a nice body and nice legs and beautiful tattoos so I wanted something just comfortable Paris uh, Hilton 21st birthday inspired so yeah that's where this comes from second look this little retro number Ooh, I I love that. Fun fact, this was a dress, just a dress. I was definitely inspired by Austin Powers on this. Um, I wanted to just take it back to the goggles. Mm -hmm. um, so I repurposed the dress because I love to reuse, reduce, recycle. And I made this little cocktail dress with those little hand sleeves. And also uh, the hand sleeves were super inspired by Maddie from Euphoria. You know that black outfit? Mm -hmm. Just like a little thumb all the other fingers exposed so that's yeah, yeah. that's where that came from what do you hope for in the future of texas drag i really hope for people to just for them to just not fuck with us honestly um i i have the hope that we will come uh from this i mean we've came from it uh, several fucking times i think this is another big rock on the road and i think as communities as people who have been through this uh, several times. I really hope that we, we can all come together as a community and with one purpose and that purpose is to let those folks up there know that not to fuck with us. Awesome. Well, Luna, thank you so much for making time for this interview. Thank you so much for everything you do for your community, both as a performer as, and as an activist. It's really uh, a super unique lane that you kind of occupy and one that's really needed. So we're, I'm super proud to see like everything that you do and, you know, everything that you will do moving forward. So thank you so much.
I love that, love that, love the work that you all do and continue to do all over social media. It's super full and an impact in my life. And I know it's impacting other, other folks who are coming after us. So thank you all as well.